If you were to tell me at 23 that I would spend close to the same amount of money that my first car cost me, there's no way I'd believe you. I'm Riley, and here's my thoughts on the 70 to 200. If you are watching this, you are debating if you should pick one up or not. The short answer is yes. I've been using the 70 to 200 for about six months. I've taken 15,000 photos or more. I always have a rule of thumb. If you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. But also in saying that, you have to invest in yourself to grow. It has become a tool for me that I see myself using for the next 10 years plus. And I have no plans on ever getting rid of it or selling it unless you offer me a bunch of money for it. It's either on my R5 my C70, I do a lot of stuff for a golf course. I was using a cheap, cheap lens. It was the first lens that my dad gave to me. It is this cheap thing. This is a EFS 55 to 250. It goes from four to 5.6. And it was driving me crazy because when I would zoom all the way to 250, I'd go to 5.6 and now it changed my exposure. After doing so many tournaments, I decided it's time to get a new lens. I was debating between two options, the 70 to 200 or the 100 to 500. In the end, guess what I bought? So the main reason why I bought the 70 to 200 is because regardless if you're at 70 or all the way at 200, it's still f2.8. And I also knew that I'd be doing a lot more than just golf. I'd be doing stuff indoors. I'd be doing headshots, corporate stuff. I also saw in Kijiji, that someone was selling a RF 85 1.2 and an RF 100mm macro. I already have the EF 100mm macro, this right here, which this is great. They were switching from Canon to Sony and getting into Sony gear, so he was selling all of his Canon stuff. I think it was $4,000 off what it would cost to buy them both brand new, so it was very tempting and I was going to do it because it'd be nice to upgrade the EF to RF so I don't need the adapter so it's shorter on the camera. I still might get the RF 85 eventually. I'm not a wedding photographer so I don't need it as much as I thought I would. The main reason why I did not spend the money and get both of them together was because the 70 to 200 is very similar to the 85 1.2. If you were to compare them both at 85, obviously the 85 looks way better and indoors it lets in way more light so that's a different scenario but if you're at 135 the photos look so similar so for having the ability to basically just be almost as good as a prime lens but have the additional features of going from 70 all the way to 200 for me it was a no-brainer the image stabilization on the lens Mwah. the fact that it has three different modes of stabilization it helps so much Especially with the IBIS on the R5, you can handheld shots at 200. The second stabilization. And then number one. You can record video and it does not look bad whatsoever. It looks smooth. It looks like you're almost on a tripod. At first, it blew my mind how well they work together. IBIS is the best for those longer focal lengths. I know the R5 has a problem at wide angle, but I don't shoot wide angle that much. So for me, it's not a big deal. When you're at 200, having that help, it makes my life so much easier. And that's all what it's about. Any new RF glass, the autofocus, it works exactly how you want it to. It's fast, it's reliable. You never have to question it. It works just as well as it should, but nothing's perfect. One thing has happened to my lens that it drives me crazy when it happens. If I'm zoomed at like 70 or around that and I quickly zoom into 200, it won't focus. It almost like it gets stuck. And then from there, I'll hit the autofocus button. It does nothing. I figured out two ways to get around this. The first one is I can just turn the manual focus ring. And then once it gets somewhat close, then it locks on. Or I can zoom out to anything below like 190. And then the camera will instantly grab it again. And then I can go back to 200 if I want to. It's a very weird bug. It's only happened four or five times. It doesn't happen a lot. It's a very rare occasion when it happens, but it does happen. I haven't had it happen on the C70, 
I haven't used the C70 to the extent that I've used the R5. But also, because now that the RF lenses are not all internal, how the front zooms out, that introduces lens creep. It does have some, especially when you have a good quality, heavy UV filter on the front of it and the lens hood. I find that it creeps quite a bit. If I know I'm not gonna be using it for a while, I'll just lock it. With the lens hood off, it doesn't do it as bad. Out of all my gear, this one gets the most attention. I'll probably end up meeting over 200 people in a day from tournaments. This gets talked about the most. People come up to me and say, wow, look at that setup. That lens looks serious. That must take good photos. How much is that? Is that thing heavy? Maybe the fact that it's white, it gets people's attention. Normally all lenses are black. You can use this for macro shots. It doesn't do as good of a job as an actual macro lens, but it can still get the job done. Let's see if you can tell the difference between these clips. This is the 70 to 200 zoomed into 200. This is the 100 mil macro. My overall thoughts. If you have money to spend back in yourself and invest in yourself, you will not regret this decision. You will grow, you will get new opportunities because of it. It's gonna show you new things that you probably haven't done before. It's gonna improve your skill set. Truly, it's better than what I was expecting. I'm really impressed with the RF glass. My only regret is not buying it sooner. It's a lot of money to spend. If you don't like it, return it. So, after all that, tell me if you agree. That's it, bye.